Hey, what's up guys? It's Christina from Photo Sprouts here. Today I made a video for fresh photography beginners because I'm gonna explain the exposure triangle. Do you know that for any type of cameras, you only need to know five core settings to shoot proficiently? They're the focus point, ISO, aperture, shutter speed, and the white balance. So for the focus point, it is the sharpness of the image. It is also the combined setting of focus mode and focus area. I think for beginners, focus point might be the hardest setting because um, depending on what camera you're using, they might call focus mode and the focus area a different name. For instance, for Canon, they call focus mode the AF operation and focus area the AF method. So I think because different cameras, they have different names for um, the same type of setting, um, you need to figure out uh, what the names are called in your own camera. And I think this is the most challenging part in for beginners. And then ISO, aperture, and shutter speed, it affects how much light can enter into the camera, which is the brightness of the picture. And I think this is the easiest because no matter what camera you're using, ISO, aperture, and shutter speed, it's universal across different cameras. And as for white balance, it's the color temperature of your image. So you can choose your image to be a little bit warm or you can bring down the Kelvin temperature to make your picture a little bit cooler. And for white balance, Every camera manufacturer will call white balance, white balance. It's just the options inside the white balance are different, so you need to figure it out. So today I'll focus on ISO, aperture, and shutter speed, which is the exposure triangle. So for these three pictures, can you tell me which photo is too bright? Too bright means overexposed, you're allowing a lot of light into the camera. Which picture is underexposed, which means there wasn't enough light, and which picture looks correctly exposed, which means you have just the right amount of light coming into the camera. Yes, that one, this one, is overexposed, that means too much light. This one is underexposed, not enough light, and this one looks just right. So every time when you take a picture, ISO, aperture, and shutter speed, they would determine how much light can come into the camera, but in different ways. ISO is the sensitivity of the camera. The higher the ISO, the more sensitive the camera is towards light. So when you increase the ISO, the camera will be able to pick up more light and your picture will become brighter. But when you drop the ISO, the camera won't be able to sense that much amount of light, so your picture will become darker. So ISO is the sensitivity of the camera. And for aperture, aperture is the opening of the lens, okay? When you widen your aperture, so here's the lens and you see that that hole in uh, the opening of the lens. So for aperture, when you have a wide opening, you are letting in a lot of light and your picture will become brighter. And when you narrow down the aperture, you're cutting off the light so your picture becomes darker. So aperture is controlling the quantity of light that comes into the camera. And when you attach the lens onto your camera body, like this, you will be controlling the aperture by dialing the F number right here, the F number, okay? The F number is the size of the aperture, okay? So for a higher F number, it means a smaller opening. But for a smaller F number, it means a wider opening. I know this is counterintuitive and this is another challenge for beginners. So now I am dialing the F number from F11 to F16. So I'm narrowing down the aperture, which means the opening is smaller and I'm cutting off the light. So the higher the F number, the smaller the opening of the aperture. Okay, so aperture is controlling the quantity of light. And then for the shutter speed, shutter speed is how fast the camera opens and closes. For a slower or a longer shutter speed, sh sh you're letting in a lot of light into your camera and your picture will become brighter. But for a fast shutter speed, sh less light will be coming into the camera and your picture will become darker. So very often, shutter speed is represented by a fraction. 
okay? So right now, my shutter speed is 1 over 50, or 50th of a second. It's like 1 second divided into 50 parts, so 50th of a second. In photography, we say 50th of a second, or 1 50th. And now, I'm increasing the shutter speed from 1 50th to 1 200th of a second. So the shutter speed is becoming faster and I'm cutting off the light. So my picture should become darker. So shutter speed is the duration of light that comes into your camera. So all good. ISO aperture and shutter speed, they determine how much light can come into the camera, but in different ways, right? But at the same time, there's a secondary effect every time when you change the ISO aperture and the shutter speed. For ISO, now, look at this picture. When you raise the ISO, your camera can pick up more light, right? So your picture becomes brighter. But at the same time, you're also introducing a lot of grains to your picture. Those grains in photography, we call them the noise. And look at this picture. At ISO 6400, you can see there are a lot of noise or grains on the image, whereas at ISO 100, the image is cleaner. So when you bump up the ISO, the secondary effect is you'll get a lot of grains or noise in the image while your picture becomes brighter. One way to fix it is to buy a more sophisticated camera, say a full frame camera in which um, when you bump up the ISO, the grains will not be that much. Okay, so the secondary effect of ISO is the grain. Now for aperture, every time when you widen the aperture, you're letting in more light. And when you narrow down the aperture, you're cutting off the light, right? But at the same time, you're changing the depth of field. Now look at these two pictures. Can you tell me which one has a blurred background and which one has a clear background? Yes, this one has a clear background and this one has a blurred background. Okay, for a blur background or blur foreground, in photography we say shallow depth of field. But for a sharper or a clearer background, we say deep depth of field. And it is controlled by the aperture. The wider the aperture, the more blur the background will become. Okay, so in other words, the wider the aperture, the shallower the depth of field you get. Okay, so remember, every time when you widen the aperture, you're letting in more light, but at the same time, you're creating a shallower depth of field, meaning that the background will be more blurred or the foreground will be more blurred. Okay, now for the shutter speed, a longer shutter speed or a slower shutter speed, you're letting in more light, but for a faster shutter speed, you're cutting off light and your picture is darker, right? But at the same time, you are changing the sense of motion. Now, look at these two pictures. Which picture do you think was shot with a faster shutter speed? And which one was shot with a longer shutter speed or a slower shutter speed? Yeah, the picture on the left, it was shot with a fast shutter speed of 1 500 of a second, whereas the picture on the right, it was shot um, with a longer shutter speed of 1 20th of a second. Okay, so remember, every time when you make the shutter speed longer, you're letting in more light and your picture will become brighter, but at the same time, you're creating motion blur. And when you increase the shutter speed, like the shutter speed become faster, you're cutting off the light and your picture will become darker, but at the same time, you are freezing the motion. So this is the secondary effect of shutter speed. As photographers, it's very important for us to actually um, make sense of the relationship. So every time when we change one variable, we have to be aware that at the same time, a secondary effect is introduced. And because changing one variable, it's not only changing the brightness or the exposure of the image, you're also introducing a secondary effect in your picture. So it's very important for you to understand the concept of compensation. Let me give you an example. Say for instance, now I've taken a picture of my friend and the picture is well exposed, not too bright and not too dark. However, I think the background is not blurred enough. So what should I do? I should widen my aperture to give me a more blurred background, right? But what happens to the light when you widen the aperture? Yes, you are getting in more light and your picture will be brighter than before. And how do you cut off the excessive amount of light? Yes, you can drop the ISO 
or you can increase the shutter speed to cut off excessive amount of light. But what happens when you increase the shutter speed? You're freezing the motion, there will be less motion blur. And what will happen if you choose to decrease the ISO? Yeah, your picture will be less noisy. So here's the final image. When you widen the aperture, you're letting in more light and your picture will become brighter than before. But at the same time, you're making the depth of field shallower. That means the background is more blurred than before. But as you widen the aperture, you're letting in more light. You have to compensate for the excessive amount of light by either dropping the ISO or increasing the shutter speed. If you increase the shutter speed, then uh, your picture will be more um, stable because there will be less motion blur. But when you drop the ISO, your picture will become less grainy and this is also a good thing. So no matter you increase the shutter speed or drop the ISO, you'll still get the same exposure, but the secondary effect will be different. So you're doing all these compensation work when you're changing one variable. And the change will also lead to a secondary effect. So in the manual mode, you have to take care of the compensation by yourself. But in the semi-auto mode, when you change one variable, the camera will do the rest to give you a correctly exposed image. So I think the only way to understand how ISO, aperture, and shutter speed work together and how you um, can compensate for the change in one variable and to be aware of the secondary effects that each change will, uh, will bring you, the best way is to get a lot of practice. And that's why in our in-person beginners and intermediate classes, we have a lot of hands-on exercise for you to make sense of the exposure triangle. And for instance, in the beginners workshop, we have the fake food photography for you to play around with the lighting, composition, and also changing the depth of field by adjusting the aperture. In the intermediate one workshop, we focused on um, activities that are aperture oriented say um, still life photography, portrait photography, and also still landscape photography. And for the intermediate two workshop, it's shutter speed related. We'll show you how to create different pictures by slowing down the shutter speed and to increase the shutter speed. For slowing down the shutter speed in daytime, you're gonna overexpose your picture. And that's why we provide the ND filters for you to do your long exposure landscape photography in daytime. Do sign up for our classes and I can say that um, it's worthwhile for you to spend like two hours in a beginner's workshop because our classes are small and you will get individual feedback from the instructor. We take no more than six people every time and there are a lot of hands-on activities for you. It's not just the slides and it's not just the lectures. You get to do a lot of work. So I hope to see you in our in-person classes. Hope you like this tutorial. Please subscribe and like this video if you find it useful for you. Thank you so much and see you next time. Bye-bye. We're Photosprout Photography Workshop in San Francisco. Equipment is provided for beginners so that they do not need to buy a camera to attend a photography class.